I'm in my Azure DevOps server. In this lab, we are going to study the pipeline that will allow us to deploy an Elastic Beanstalk application using Azure DevOps server. So let's study the pipeline first. Go to my Tiger application. And under the pipelines, you'll find a pipeline called my Tiger app sample. Let's edit this. So it has a number of steps. The first one being uh, the .NET uh, build uh, tasks. So there are four of them. All what I have done was click this add button and then added this uh, .NET core task and four of them and then configured them. So the first one is of course the restoration where the command is restored as restore and I'm restoring the one that related to all the CSAP uh, projects. Uh, the package uh, from the Nougat dog, um, so that uh, if there's any dependency, it will take from there. And there's no any advanced uh, configurations um, and control options. I have enabled this task, of course, and there's no any output variables. Build is also the same. Uh, I just make a .NET build. Um, and the configuration I'm passing as a build configuration. So this build configuration is a variable which I have defined here. You can find that the build configuration is a release build. It's not a debug build. So if I go into the task, uh, that's the argument that I'm passing and the control option, uh, this task is enabled. If there's any test projects, uh, I'm going to run uh, the test, which will run uh, any test projects. Configuration is also the build configuration like before. I say publish test results and code coverage, so that will appear in the Azure DevOps Observer. But in my case, I don't have any tests, so I have just, uh, this will do nothing, but if you want, you can just remove this. So, and then you have the publish command, uh, which will publish a .NET Core web application. Uh, make sure that you have tick publish web projects. And the argument I have defined here is configuration, of course, build configuration, which will make a release build. And the output is into this location, build artifact staging directory and into a folder called my tie gap. And I also make sure that it is zip so that all the website content is zipped. Then I copy the Elastic Beanstalk manifest file into the root of uh, that staging directory. So you can find that the source folder is this one. And the file that I'm copying into the destination is AWS Windows deployment manifest file. This file describes, as I discussed before, where to copy the files or the zip file in IIS root directory in the destination Elastic Beanstalk application. So I define the target folder as this. And then I'm going to create a zip file. So this zip file will have a Elastic Beanstalk manifest file in the root directory and another zip file inside that, which has the website artifact. So it's a, uh, so inside this zip file, there's another zip file. So the archive type is zip, and I'm creating a file named mytigap underscore name of the build number so that I can relate which build result in which file. And finally, I'm going to upload this uh, file into an S3 bucket. Uh, it's going to be uh, S3 upload. As before, I'm not going to specify any credentials. Uh, the credentials for this one will come from uh, EC2 instance that builds this machine. That's one method of deploying. Alternatively, you can create your own connection. We already studied this, so we'll not go into detail around that. The region I'm going to specify is uh, App Southeast 2, which is Sydney region where my uh, S3 bucket is. And the bucket name I need to specify. So let's go into my uh, artifact uh, folder and then explore whether the bucket exists. You can find that I already have defined a folder called my build artifacts. And under that you have uh, one called my tie gap deliveries. So that's the folder I want to deliver these artifacts. So all my zip files once get created will be uploaded into my tie gap deliveries. So let's configure this uh, S3 folder to be as the destination for these deliveries. Uh, 
uh, location of this one is my build artifact, which is this uh, S3 bucket. And the fold is my tiger app deliveries. You can find that the target folder is my tiger app deliveries. And the file name is my tiger app build number. So the zip file will get created. Source folder is my uh, build artifact staging directory. Access control is uh, private. I don't need any server side encryption. There's no any advanced option. If there's a one, I override the file. This is fine for each uh, new execution of the pipeline will have a different file name. So we are in good shape. And the control option, I have enabled it. So far, this is okay. We will study the deploy of Elastic Beanstalk later. So let's disable this uh, task. So we are not going to execute this step. Save your queue and then queue a new build. But before deploying this, you need to make sure that uh, this S3 has right uh, access permissions. So let's set the uh, build machine because we haven't configured the credentials here. We will define the credentials for the IAM role of the build agent. I'm in my AWS console, go to EC2. We already did this. I have this one, I'm going to define the permissions for the build machine. Go to its IAM role. I can define fine grain permissions if I want and then attach it here. That will allow just enough access to the uh, S3 bucket, but I'm following the easy approach. I'm attaching S3 full access. I can give uh, S3 write only access, but in this case, I'm giving S3 full access. Everything in good shape. If you want, you can define a fine grain principle uh, that will allow write only to that folder. For the moment, I'm in good shape. So let's execute the pipeline. So let's queue the pipeline. Queue a new build. Agent pool is this. Queue a new build. So that has started the build. Let's go into that. We can go to the builds from here also. You can find the current executing build. So its restoration is complete. It's now building the application. Build was successful. It's now publishing the artifacts. And now it's doing the S3 upload. Everything is successful. So let's go out to the S3 bucket and explore the file format. Go to S3. under my build artifacts. So delivery should be here, my tiegap deliveries. You can find that there's a zip file being created, my tiegap that correspond to this build number 2009-0204. So if you look at uh, your build agent, you can find that the build that I ran was 2019-0204 number two. And it's the same number you have here. So let's download this and then explore the file. The file I downloaded is here. Let's extract it. And you can find the extracted file that uh, there's a manifest file that I copied to the root of that uh, zip file. If you open it, you can find that it describes the manifest version, deployment, it's uh, going to be ASP.NET Core web application, name of it is going to be .NET Core, and it specifies the zip file, which identifies uh, this zip file as the application to be deployed. Location to copy it is the IIS root path, and the IIS website is default website. So that is what identify where to deploy this application inside Elastic Beanstalk. And this uh, application is nothing more than a zip file of uh, the uh, what we just uh, created as an IIS uh, web application. You can find that it's a simple sp.net core web application. So I have the zip version of my web application in S3. Let's try to deploy this one into Elastic Beanstalk using the manual method.